Hi, this is Kai from New Electronic Frontier and Modular Wednesday. And this is session number two of Modular from the Ground Up. So in the first session, we talked about the VCO and what kind of um, you know, waveforms you can put out and how they sound and how you can make them show on the scope. So here I put it a new module that's our master recorder that is just in there for recording the uh, sounds I make. You can see this here, but um, yeah, we just drop it to the right because it's uh, yeah, it doesn't be needed in the picture. So now for the scope, one trick actually, if you um, trigger it, you can freeze the waveform to see it more clearly. But be aware um, with changing it, you know, it, it triggers, but sometimes you have to re-trigger it again, right, to show what's happening. So now, big question for today is how gonna are we gonna play this? Because these waveforms are super nice, but you know, it's not really musical at all. So we need to get some notes actually into it. And there's um, like a couple of ways on how you can do this and two of them I want to talk to you about today. So if you have VCV Rack installed and you click uh, with the right click, you get all the modules, right? And with the brand selector, you can select VCV, for example. Oh no, I deselected it, select it again. You get all modules and most of them are natively delivered with um, VCV. So what I'm looking for today is the MIDI to CV converter. And um, a MIDI to CV converter does exactly what it says. It converts MIDI signals of uh, any kind, and there's a lot of kinds, um, into control voltages that we can use in a um, modular setup. And this is true for the physical modules as well as for this particular one, which um, converts MIDI coming to the program, to the computer, um, in, in some way um, into VCV rec control voltages to control our VCO, for example, and other stuff in here. So um, if you go for physical modules, there is a plethora of modules out there that can do MIDI to CV conversion, vice versa, etc. Um, so this resembles a pretty simple module. However, um, it can do, do quite a lot. If you look on the from device section, you see this is all just outputs from the MIDI device into VCV Rec, so no, no way back. There's other modules for that. We have one wall per octave, which is the pitch, which we want to play with today. Then we have the gate signal that will come into play in session number three. We have the velocity that's actually like the velocity which would you hit the key. So how hard do you hit a key on a keyboard? Um, then you have aftertouch. This is an option for some controllers or keyboards out there. Pitch wheel, mod wheel. This is the fancy wheels, mostly in the left side of a keyboard found. You have a clock signal because um, you can also MIDI, send MIDI signals from a, a digital audio workstation or something that can translate mod, mod cl uh, clock um, signals into uh, control voltages for having the same clock speed here inside the CV rack. Then sometimes you need not the original clock signal, but a um, divided one. So you have automatically a divided one. You have a re-trigger signal. That means if this comes as something that plays already is stopped in the middle and uh, starts again from the beginning. And you have a start, uh, stop and continue trigger output, which also can come in very handy um, in times. So, the really nice thing in, in this module actually is if you have installed it on your computer and you do not have any external gear, you still can play with your um, <coughs> with your module setup. Because if you click on Core MIDI, um, this is actually what Apple does for, for its MIDI implementation. You can also choose computer keyboard or mouse or even gamepad. We now go for computer keyboard or mouse. What this means is I can now play my keyboard right in front of me or my laptop keyboard and it puts out notes on the uh, volt per octave pitch and also the gate and uh, I think also velocity. But today we are looking at the volt per octave. So this one volt per octave output goes into the volt per octave input on our VCO. And what happens now is if I play notes, you see the waveform changes and the higher I get on my keyboard, you hopefully hear the sound. Yes, it's still recording. That's nice. Um, you see the higher and lower the notes get. So I just play musically stuff on my keyboard, right? Okay, 
So this is great, a great way just to, to play around. That's nice. So if you have anything else connected, um, this will also do. I go back to core MIDI and let's just see. Oh, I have my launch key mini keyboard also in here. And if I choose this, you see also can hear. And now I'm playing this on my keyboard and it transforms the note signals into VCV rack. So super handy way just to play around with it and, and make some things. And you can for sure use everything. So my Launch Key Mini has an arpeggiator, for example, that can play notes automatically. And um, yes, you can you can use it in here as well. So um, about what it is when we do not have any external gear or do not want to use any external gear. So now comes in an interesting part. And this is again, right click uh, sequences. And uh, in a lot of cases, people love to have sequences directly into in their rack because the rack itself becomes completely um, yeah, independent of external gear, independent of a computer or something. So you put a, a, a sequencer right into your rack. And usually this is something like this. This is a very basic one. However, there's much more complicated out there, but usually it's kind of a, a step sequencer so it has steps that are following like a musical rhythm. So um, and um, <coughs> so typically you have a, a division of four, eight, uh, 16, 32 steps, something like this. And to each step you can assign a note. So this one here, if we look to it, it has a, a tempo knob. This is pretty important because uh, the tempo now basically at 12 o'clock it's set to 120 BPM. Um, it has a clock on its own. Uh, so I can hit the run button here and it's running. You can see this here. Um, if you, so I'll go away. Um, this signal then is also resembled as a clock module, right? So there are sequences out there that need an external clock, but this one has an internal one. Um, so you can set the tempo, you can hit run and it goes straight away. This is what we want to do today. You can also uh, select which steps, how many steps you want to have. This one has eight and uh, you, you can dial this down if you like, um, but makes sense to have eight for today. And then you have like three rows of control voltage, right? So this is three independent rows. You can set voltages in here and these voltages are put out here to CV1, 2 and 3. So uh, in theory, you could just, you know, put this outputs to like three different VCOs and played th three different VCOs with a variation of these notes coming out of here. So the white buttons are actually um, triggering the steps. If you make them gray, the step is jumped. So nothing comes out of there. And uh, down here, you can also give out a trigger signal. That means every time the next note is hit, a trigger signal will also be hit and given out here. You can um, give out the number of steps. You can give out the clock signal, a run and a reset signal because you can push run here and reset here. And this gives also auto trigger, which can control other modules, for example. Also, if you want to make it more complicated and your setup gets more sophisticated, you can control tempo, steps, clock, run and reset also from other modules. So you can control the sec three with also other modules controlling it. So you can daisy chain like sequences and stuff like that. So wild stuff, but not for today. For today, we just want to control the musical pitch. So connect CV1 with Volt Proactive on your VCO. And then let's dial in some subtle changes to this guys here. So not too hard, probably. And let's hit the run button. Bam. And what happens? You can see the the signal runs through here right and you can see this here if you follow the little lamps here right and with every hit here it displays a different uh, note and the note dialed in here however now comes an important part because <coughs> the thing is actually <coughs> that these sequences you've seen this this is uh, dials that are um that are not pitched, right? So I have a continuum of pitch. I do not have like on a, on a, on a, on a piano, you know, I have the white keys and the white keys are all tuned, ideally, um, to a certain note, right? I have a C, a D, an E, etc. So if I play this 
key, I know that this is the note I am playing. Here you have a continuum. That means you have different values in between the C and the D, for example. And if you think of just the waveform or frequency that a sound in the end is, there is a lot of frequency bandwidth between a C and a D, and this you can dial in here. However, <clears throat> the challenge will be that <clears throat> these notes together probably do not sound very musically, um, because what makes musicality uh, in most places is that you have um, a certain uh, straight division between the wavelengths. So, but that's music theory. So, what can we do here to have this nice? There's another tool we need in between uh, and again right click on VCV modules and you find it here. It's a quantizer, QNT in short. And this is a very basic version of a quantizer and what it does is it takes a control voltage and it rounds it up and down to the nearest tuned note or pitched note. That means if you have something that is nearly to a C, but not 100% there yet, the quantizer just up, up rounds this note up to a full C. Or if it's then nearer to D, it puts it to a D, etc, etc. So what happens is he puts whatever values come in here, he rounds them up and down to fit into a musical scale. And this is, um, you know, just full chromatic. Um, and you put the CV output of this row from the sequencer in the volt per octave input on the quantizer. And then he does his magic rounding up and down in the in between. And on the end, you put the output in the VC per octave input. And what happens now is if you run it, you will get like tuned notes on this keyboard here. And you see they are blinking, so you can follow up which ones these are. However, this is a very simple version of a quantizer, so it, it, it does not really have a scale in here right now. There is more sophisticated ones where you can also set scales, etc. So you never hit a wrong note basically with your sequencer, which is quite nice and makes it super easy to play with external gear and um, also, um, yeah, other VCOs, for example, and other uh, sequences. Because if you would do this by ear, if you would uh, use a second VCO and try to tune everything, every knob um, uh, per ear, that becomes a pretty daunting task, to be honest. Okay, so I would say that makes it up for today. Um, that was session number two on how we can actually play the VCO uh, with notes from external keyboards or controllers or digital audio workstation via MIDI signals transformed into control voltages. And also how we can use a simple sequencer and a quantizer to get nice musical notes out here to play our VCO. However, the ex result is, I guess you agree, um, is still, I mean, it's notes played, but in a continuum of our VCO's beep, let's say. Um, so in the next session, we will really focus on how can we shape the sound that it sounds like something that we know from a synthesizer more, right? So how do we really shape the sound here? And this is where envelopes come into play. And in the next session, we talk about envelopes and how we can shape the sound of this thing here now so that it becomes even more musically usable. So, but that's session number three. Hope to see you there. That was Kai from New Electronic Frontier and Modulo Wednesday. Thanks and come back and subscribe. <laughs>